AOL, originally known as America Online, is an American web portal and online service provider that began in 1983. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified of my latest videos. Please hit that like button and leave a suggestion or a comment. You might see that in a future video. Thanks for watching and now back to a regular scheduled program. I've had a computer for a couple of years now, but to be honest, I didn't see what all the fuss was about. Then I got America Online. Now I use it all the time. It makes my life easier. Watch. Use email to send messages to family and friends. Point and click your way around the internet with America Online's great new web browser. And there's more. Scan hundreds of magazines, get sports scores, enjoy hobbies, even shop online. New unlimited internet and America Online for one low price. AOL began in 1983 as a short-lived venture called Control Video Corporation, or CVC, founded by William Von Meester. Its sole product was an online service called GameLine for the Atari 2600 video game console after Von Meester's idea of buying music on demand was rejected by Warner Brothers. Subscribers bought a modem from the company for $49.95 and paid a one-time US $15 setup fee. GameLine permitted subscribers to temporarily download games and keep track of high scores at a cost of a dollar per game. The telephone connect disconnected and the downloaded game would remain in GameLine's master module and playable until the user turned off the console or downloaded another game. In January of 1983, Steve Case was hired as a marketing consultant for Control Video on the recommendation of his brother. In May, Jim Kimsey became a manufacturing consultant for Control Video, which was near bankruptcy. Kimsey was brought in by Frank Caulfield, an investor in the company. In early 1985, Von Meester left the company. In May of 1985, Quantum Computer Services, an online services company, was founded by Jim Kinsey from the remnants of Control Video. Case got an opportunity to put some of his ideas into practice when he helped to build Quantum Computer Services Inc. into a partnership with Commodore International, a leading manufacturer of personal computers in Control Video. His idea was to create an online bulletin board for owners of the Commodore 64 computers. Under Case's guide, he nurtured Quantum from a few thousand members to more than 100,000. In 1988 and 89 respectively, Quantum developed a partnership with Apple and Tandy Corporation. After parting ways in October of 1989 with Apple, Quantum changed their name to America Online. Case promoted and sold AOL as an online service for people unfamiliar with computers, in contrast to CompuServe, which was well established in the technical community. In 1991, AOL for DOS was launched using a GeoWorks interface, followed a year later by AOL for Windows. This coincided with the growth in pay-based online services like Prodigy, CompuServe, and Genie. In addition, American Online undertook an ambitious marketing campaign to increase the number of its subscribers. Each customer who signed up for America Online service was charged $7.95 a month for the first two hours spent on the network, and then $0.10 cents a minute after that. Over the next few years, AOL launched strategic alliances with companies such as The Tribune Company, Apple, Sprint, Disney, and CNN. The company started selling membership kits at bookstores and computer supply stores and also began to have starter discs bound into selected computer trade magazines. In, in addition, America Online continued to pre-install its software in many computers, making it particularly easy for new computer buyers to join in the online community. Manufacturers incorporating America Online software into their products included IBM, Apple, Compaq, AST, Tandy, NEC, and Computerdyne. By October of 1993, America Online's campaign to increase its subscriber base and enhance its market share had pushed its number of users past 400,000, and its blistering pace of growth continued. 
AOL purchased Search Engine Web Crawler in 1995, but sold it to Excite the following year. The deal made Excite the sole search and directory service on AOL. After the deal closed in 1997, AOL launched its own branded search engine based on Excite called NetFind. AOL charged its users an hourly fee until December of 1996 when the company changed to a flat monthly rate of 1995. During this time, AOL connections were flooded with users trying to connect, and many canceled their accounts due to constant busy signals. Another issue back in the day was that you couldn't use the phone to dial out if you were using AOL. Were you one of those who got a second phone line for the sole purpose of using dial-up AOL? In 1996, the short-lived eWorld was purchased by AOL. In 1997, about half of all U.S. homes with internet access had it through AOL. During this time, AOL's content channels included news, sports, and entertainment, experienced their greatest growth as AOL became the dominant online service internationally with more than 34 million subscribers. In 1998, AOL announced it would acquire Netscape, best known for their web browser, in a major $4.2 billion deal. The deal closed on May March 17, 1999. Another acquisition in December of 1999 was that of MapQuest for $1.1 billion. By the year 2000, AOL was the nation's biggest internet provider and worth $125 billion. AOL and Time Warner announced plans to merge, forming AOL Time Warner Inc. The deal closed on January 11, 2001. It was the largest merger in history when completed with the combined value of the companies at $360 billion. This value fell sharply as low as $120 billion as markets repriced AOL's valuation, a pure internet firm more modestly when combined with the traditional media and cable business. By 2002, it was clear such grand predictions were unrealistic. Despite its powerful brand and unrivaled global member base of 34 million subscribers, the AOL division had seen its once stratospheric subscriber growth slow, its ad revenue fall, and its international operations bleed money. Due to the dot-com bubble bursting, the tide had turned against pure internet companies with many collapsing under falling stock prices and even the strongest companies in the field losing up to 75% of their market value. But even with the losses, AOL is amongst the internet giants. In April of 2006, AOL announced it was retiring the full name America Online. The official name of the service became AOL and the full name of the Time Warner subdivision became AOL LLC. In August of that year, AOL announced it would give away email accounts and software previously available only to paying customers provided the customer assessed AOL or AOL.com through a non-AOL-owned access method. The change from paid to free was also designed to slow the rate of members canceling their accounts and defecting to Microsoft Hotmail Yahoo, and other free email providers like Google. By November of 2007, AOL's customer base had been reduced to 10.1 million subscribers and the conversion rates of accounts from paid access to free access was over 80%. In 2009, Time Warner announced it would spin off AOL as an independent company. AOL unveiled a new sneak preview of a new brand identity which had the word AOL superimposed onto canvases created by commissioned artists. In 2011, AOL acquired Huffington Post for $315 million. AOL formed a strategic ad selling partnership with two of its largest competitors, Yahoo and Microsoft. According to the new partnership, the three companies would begin selling inventory on each other's sites. The strategy was designed to help them compete with Google and ad networks. On May 12, 2015, Verizon announced plans to buy AOL in a deal valued at $4.4 billion. The transaction was completed on June 23rd. 
The deal would broaden Verizon's advertising sales platforms and increase its video production ability through websites such as TechCrunch and Engadget, as well as Huffington Post. In June of 2015, AOL announced a deal with Microsoft to take over the majority of its digital advertising business. Under the pact, as many as 1,200 Microsoft employees involved with the business would be transferred to AOL, and the company will take over the sale of display, video, and mobile ads on various Microsoft platforms in nine countries. In November of 2020, the Huffington Post was sold to BuzzFeed in a stock deal. Online veterans Yahoo and AOL have new owners. Today, Verizon announced it is selling its media unit, which includes those brands. Apollo Global Management both bought both companies for $5 billion. The business will simply be called Yahoo when the deal closes, and that's expected in the second half of 2020. So what do you remember most about America Online? Was it the iconic, You've got mail! That you would hear when you first sign in. Those three words could brighten anyone's 1990s day. Or maybe it was when you used Instant Messenger, years before you could actually message from your cell phone. Or maybe you were like me and spent hours in a chat room where you would eventually meet and marry your wife. Or maybe it was those AOL drink coasters, uh, I mean AOL CDs that you would get in the mail with everything. Don't tell me that you didn't have like 10 or 20 of them gathering dust at your desk. And if you grew up in the 1990s, who could forget this? Hey, if you just watched my video, thanks for watching. Hit that like button and please subscribe to Eric C. Productions.